Sing Noel, sing Noel, sing Noel for Christ our Savior. Sing Noel. The shepherd on the hillside, wise men from afar, celebrate the coming of our Lord. What a tiny stable! A child is given unto us, a Savior is born. To all the in heaven, to all the earth, for Christ our Savior, singing Noel. All of creation, celebrate His birth. For Christ our Savior, singing Noel. See the little baby in the manger low. Joy will we adore the newborn king. Hosanna in the highest, kneel before his throne. Son of the mighty chorus, hark the herald angels sing. Sing Noel, sing Noel to all the earth, for Christ our Savior. Sing Noel, sing Noel, all of creation, celebrate his birth, for Christ our Savior, sing Noel, rejoice for the God is with us, rejoice Emmanuel, rejoice for the song of trumpets, rejoice and rings those bell, rejoice to the King of glory, and again to say rejoice, he is no wonderful. Counselor, the Prince of Peace, yeah. To all the earth, for Christ our Savior, sing Noel. All of creation, celebrate His birth. For Christ our Savior, sing Noel. Sing Noel, sing. Hello, Happy New Year. Welcome to College Mennonite Church. We're glad you're with us this morning. We are glad that you are able to watch us through Facebook, um, virtually somehow, television, or hear us on the radio. It's hard to believe that this is the ninth day of Christmas, nine days that we again celebrated that we were revealed, the Savior was revealed to us. He was revealed to us, not just to a group of people, not just to a tribe, not just to his parents, not just to the shepherds, but he was revealed to the foreigners such as the Magi. They waited, the Magi waited, watching for a star, a sign, and when they saw it, they followed it to find him. Because of this, because he was revealed to all, not just the people around him, I will glorify him among the nations and sing praises to his name. Please join me in the call to worship. Long ago, God's spirit breathed love into a tense political world. Take a deep breath. 
the Holy Spirit breathes in you too. Long ago, God's people discovered God's presence in exile. Look around you. God is here with you too. Long ago, prophets spoke to comfort grieving people. Listen, God speaks comfort to you too. We breathe, we look, and we listen. We wait. Please join us in like the beginning of a sunrise, a new world is drawing, love breaks in, illuminating the way, a brilliant glow that waits for us. Breathe, look, listen, and worship our God who breaks the dawn. Please join us in singing number 32 from Sing the Story, O Beautiful Star, pre-recorded from the 2017 Christmas pageant.
on your screen, you will see. I'll read it. Oh, on your screen, you're seeing these verses 26 and 27 from the book of Romans. I chose these verses because sometimes there are moments in our lives when there aren't, there aren't any words that we can express what we feel in ourselves. Sometimes when we pray and sometimes when we want to talk to the Lord. So, this is what it says. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We have many things to pray for as we, as we pray for ourselves and others. Please join me in the prayers of the people. Lord, you know us well. Thank you for sending an intercessor to us. This morning we pray for, and we hold in our hearts, all these people that have lost loved ones in the past few weeks or in the past few days. We pray for Whitney and Will and their family as they experienced another loss as Whitney's uncle David died after a long journey with cancer. We also hold in prayer Sophia Marino, her brother Donato Ruiz, passed away on Friday in the early morning hours in Matamoros, Mexico, from COVID-19. We also pray for the family of Elizabeth, Libby Reber. Libby died peacefully at Greencroft Healthcare on Sunday, December 27th. We also pray for Glenn Hoover's family. He died early morning yesterday in Green Valley, Arizona. We hold Naomi, her sister, and their family in our prayers. We also hold in our hearts and in our prayers Mike Landis and his family as they mourn the death of Mike's mother who died peacefully at Greencroft Healthcare this past Friday. We also continue to pray for all those families who have lost loved ones this past year because of COVID-19. We pray for those family members of Ashley Van Verst from Goldenrod who died yesterday. Lord, have mercy on each one of us who are grieving. Those of us who continue to grieve the loss of loved ones, even if they didn't die yesterday or a few days ago. We pray that you give our souls comfort. We also, again, ask you to be with Caleb Ganawan and his family as Caleb is going to, once again, Riley Hospital on Tuesday the 5th for another round of immunotherapy. We pray for continued recovery of those in our congregation who have been affected by COVID. We pray for our healthcare workers here at Goshen Hospital, Elkhart Hospital, Maple City and Vista Clinics, and all the other places that there are people trying to get a, a hold on this situation and eradicate this virus. These healthcare workers are exhausted. They're tired, not physically, but emotionally. What they have witnessed, the people they've had to accompany because their loved ones can't be with them, it's very difficult. Please comfort them and comfort their souls. Prepare them for what seems maybe another wave of cases 
and somewhat of a mutation of this virus. Renew their strength, give them extra doses of deep rest, calm, and peace. We pray for those who continue to endure this long period of isolation. I pray that they feel your presence. We pray for our nation and our world. We also pray for all the petitions that we have in our hearts that we don't put into words, but you know them. I ask that you answer them according to your will. In Jesus' name. I pray, amen. I invite you to join us as in singing, shine, Jesus, shine. As children, you come and get closer to your screen to join us for children's time. wiggled while waiting and wiggled some more, waiting for something so good and so true that you didn't quite know what to do. You sat on your hands to tame your wiggly weight until your fingers were tingly and numb. Why so long for the gift to arrive? Why not now for the better and better? Here is a story for you while you wiggle and wait. A story of waiting and praying, of goodness to come and light for all the world. Waiting, 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 praying, praying, praying. There was once an old woman named Anna. Of her we know very little. But the Gospel of Luke tells of her faith. 
This woman, dear Anna, was at least 84. She paced and paced the temple floor, waiting, praying, and waiting some more. For days, weeks, and months, and years, she and the Holy Spirit were friends so dear. Leave the temple, she did not dare. Brick by brick of the temple walls she covered in prayer. Anna, a prophetess, a prayer, a stayer. She listened and watched for God both day and night, knowing and hoping and waiting for light. Stone upon stone of the temple floor, she sat and she walked and she walked some more. Prayers for the people, prayers for peace. Waiting and waiting and praying some more. Oh, look, there's dear Simeon, old and prayerful like me. Always a good friendly sight to see. Oh, my Lord of heaven, can it actually be? Just then, a brightness beyond bright, when a man, his wife, with a dear babe in arm, enters the temple, what a wondrous new sight. Simeon sees too and moves with haste to see. Can it be? Can it be? Then I hear old Simeon's voice. For you I have waited my whole life long. Messiah, Deliverer, sweet Jesus, hear my praise song. You are the light for the whole wide world. Hope, salvation, and all love unfurled. You give your people and me, Simeon, release. I can go forth from waiting with such tender peace. Anna's old bones and weakening frame teemed with new life at the sound of his name. Jesus, dear Jesus, Messiah, my friend, my heart will be full to the very end. Bless the dear people with your wisdom and light. Grow in years, inches, and God's moving might. Waiting, praying, and waiting some more. All will be well as Christ's child we adore. Go out, go out. Anna must go, proclaiming this good gift to all that she trusts. And then to more and more she will tell. Baby Jesus, Messiah is here. All indeed will be well. Today's preacher is our pastoral team leader, Phil Waite. Let us pray for him. Lord, thank you for Phil, his life, his leadership, the knowledge and wisdom that you have given him, and for the testimony of love for your creation that he demonstrates. As he shares with us what you have placed in his heart, let, us, let our ears listen our minds analyze, and our hearts receive as your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Grace to you and peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Gracia a ustedes y paz en el nombre de nuestro Señor Jesucristo. Our scripture this morning is from Luke chapter 2 beginning with verse 25. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous 
and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people, Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, this child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple but worshiped there with fasting and prayer, day, night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. I hope that stays there. I had a dream last night. I had a COVID dream last night. Do any of you get COVID dreams? I think that we could put together a nice little booklet, funny booklet actually, uh, among our staff here at College of Midnight of our, of our COVID dreams, the COVID dreams that we've had. In my dream last night, I was in, a, in a, what I will describe as like a youth hostel type dormitory setting, sleeping in a room um, in the middle of COVID with lots of strangers, people I didn't, I, I didn't know, and a bathroom down the hall that didn't seem particularly uh, sanitary. This is my COVID, COVID nightmare. And fortunately, I, I was able to wake up from that nightmare and find myself in my, in my own bed in, in my own home. Unfortunately, I woke up from that nightmare and found myself in the living nightmare that is COVID. Some of us here at College of Night have been especially hit hard by COVID. There's uh, somebody that I, that, I, that I know, member of our, of our church, who was describing to me uh, what they experienced, what the experience of COVID was like in a particularly confining situation, essentially kind of a lockdown, permanent lockdown kind of situation. I said, what's it, what's it like? How do, you, how do you survive? And they said, I, 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 I wake up in the morning and you know, I, I realize it's still COVID and it feels like I have a bad job, a job that I hate, that I just don't want to go to, but I need the job and I have to go and I can do this for a year. And I felt like that kind of described Uh, the experience of COVID, day by day by day. We take it day by day by day. For some of us at College Mennonite, we've lost loved ones. And and Madeline, during the prayer this morning, was talking about that experience of losing loved ones to COVID and the pain of that. Some, we've had death uh, among our community here at CMC from COVID. Others have slipped during this time more deeply into dementia and confusion and isolation from those closest to them. Others have had 
to grieve the loss of loved ones, not from COVID, but at a distance, uh, unable to be around their loved one at the time of death. Others have had to die uh, alone. Others have, uh, have had to remember and celebrate and, and grieve the death of loved ones without the, the privilege, the, the comfort of a gathered community around them to, to share in their experience. They've been forced to, to grieve alone. Others of us have gotten sick from COVID. Some of us seriously so. Others of us have had our, our lives upended by being sick or having sickness come near to us. Some of us have been able to work in isolation. Others of us uh, have had to go to work, um, putting ourselves out there where we are exposed to disease. And, and while we might feel relatively safe ourselves, uh, others with whom we might be in contact are put at risk by the fact that we have to go to work as an essential worker and be in a high-risk situation. Uh, some have been required to go to work in situations that are particularly unsafe. Uh, factories, for example, are particularly unsafe, uh, in, uh, been unsafe environments uh, for some of our members. And, and they've gotten sick. They've been forced to continue to work because they have to have a paycheck to pay the bills. And then they've gotten sick and they've not been able to work. All of these things have pressed upon us in this living nightmare. And if you're like me, there are times when you despair and you get depressed and you wonder, how long, O oh Lord? And you say, in the spirit of Anna and Simeon, O oh Savior, rend the heavens, come down and save us. We long for your redemption. In the early days of COVID, boy, this seems so long ago now, there was talk that this was like war, war against an invisible, uh, invisible enemy. Remember that? Remember the war against an invisible enemy? Um, now, we have the, now we have the image of the sort of spiky ball, sort of looks like a dog toy in our, our minds. That's the, that's the visible COVID in our minds. But we spoke about an invisible enemy and we were going to go to war. And there was the beginning of talk about uh, uh, the solidarity that comes, uh, that comes from going to war. I, I'm not old enough to have experienced uh, World War II, but, but I, I hear stories. You know, as a history person, I, I read about World War II and the, and the history of, of, of when that uh, began and the social solidarity around a common purpose or cause, the, the mobilization of the entire resources of a society for a common purpose that was to serve the, the, the benefit of, of, of everyone. And so when the talk of, of this is going to be like war, I said, oh, this is going to be an occasion for us all to come together in solidarity as a human community. Uh, for a, for a common purpose, and all the incredible resources uh, and industrial strength of this country will be put in the service of fighting this disease, put in the service of protecting the most vulnerable, that we will all be together in this, working for a common purpose, for a common good, a social solidarity of care and support. I had visions of uh, industrial efforts to create personal protective equipment, uh, testing 
at, 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 at the highest level. I had visions of, of resources given to, to frontline workers, of recruiting new workers to, to, to even to go door to door and to be in touch with people, uh, unifying our, our efforts, working together in social solidarity, doing everything that we could to keep people safe, and to stamp out a deadly disease. I'll leave it to you to judge how successful we have been. Uh, we can be grateful that we have amazingly and remarkably uh, vaccines available to us. Um, and we, we wait eagerly for those to be distributed broadly in our society in hopes that soon we will all be here again uh, together. But the price that we have paid is a dear one and a painful one, and we grieve, and we long for something different. Anna and Simeon uh, were unique people. They were, you might call them spiritual savants. Simeon's described as this person on whom the Holy Spirit rests like the little dove on Pamela's shoulder in the children's time. Guided by the Spirit, alive to God and alive uh, to God's presence in the world. Simeon longed for more. Simeon wanted to, to see, to see God's salvation. And Anna, a prophet, lived to 84 years old, almost her entire life as, as a widow, in the temple, day and night, praying fervently, fervent, longing to see the redemption of Jerusalem, the text tells us. It's difficult to know exactly what they had in mind, what redemption was going to look like, what, cons what the consolation of Israel was going to look like, what light to the Gentiles was going to look like, what glory to God's people Israel was going to look like, what salvation was going to look like. What did they have in mind? I mean, we don't really know. They didn't art articulate a kind of soteriology, a, an idea about what salvation is. They didn't have a, they didn't, they weren't particularly theologians to articulate these things. What they had was a, a deep sense that the way that things were, were not right. And that God was about to do a new thing to change the way that things were. And the way, what, what, what they saw when they looked around them was estrangement. I'm going to use the word estrangement. They experienced uh, a community. They experienced a land that was estranged in some way from God and God's purposes. They experienced people who were estranged from the land as more and more absentee landlords purchased the land and exploited it with cash crops for their own gain at the expense of the people who lived on the land. Estrangement. They experienced the estrangement of God's people from each other. And they experienced the estrangement of a whole human community longing for a light to the Gentiles, longing for a presence prepared in front of all people, salvation prepared in front of all peoples. This was their, their longing deep inside of them. If ever there was a time when we could identify with that longing, 
Now is that time. Christians, in Christian thought, we have held up Jesus as the center of creation. In John's Gospel, Jesus says that everything that is, everything that has come into being, everything that has life, everything that exists, has come into being through Jesus, the center of creation. In him we all live and take our breath. In, in, in him all creation is bound together in a common life for a common purpose. We are one. And Jesus had various ways of, of describing this. And um, one of, a, f- a favorite of, of many, a favorite of many, in a, or, uh, many Christians is the parable of the Good Samaritan, told by, again, Luke and Luke's gospel. Jesus is asked this question, who is my neighbor? Who is my neighbor? To whom does my commitment uh, belong as a, as a human being? To whom am, am I bound to? To whom do I need to show social solidarity? Who, who, who is that person? Who, who is my neighbor? Who is bound to me by being a creature created by God? Who is that person? And so Jesus tells this story. Jesus, Jesus tells the story of a man who was on the journey from Jerusalem to Jericho, a windy mountain road, and uh, fell into bandits and was robbed and left for dead. And along came, along came a Samaritan, uh, 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 an enemy, one who is estranged from Judeans, one who was estranged from the victim of these robbers. And while others who might seem righteous pass by, this Samaritan goes to this victim on the ground and tends to him, nurses him, cares for him, takes him to a place where he can rest and be healed and pays for his expenses. This story is our story. It's the story of who God calls us to be and how God calls us to live. It's the story of what is, that we are all bound together in Christ belonging to each other. Here at at College Mennonite, we've been using the term beloved community, which has a a history, the term has a history that I I won't bore you with. Uh, It was claimed, I will say that it was claimed by Martin Luther King Jr. in particular, beloved community, as as a kind of vision not just for, for the church, but for, for all of us together as God's creatures, a beloved community. And it is our desire here at CMC to be a beloved community, to express and give witness to the fact that we are bound together as creatures in Christ. And we have seen this happen in many ways. 
I was uh, visiting my dad uh, several months ago now, I guess it was, and his uh, diagnosis of, of uh, metastatic melanoma had been, uh, was new at the time. And people were bringing meals to him. People, people up that he didn't know from college Mennonite church were bringing meals to them, coming to the back door, bringing meals. I, I would go to visit and there would be people coming in and bringing meals to him. Uh, day after day after day, caring for him <laughs> when, um, when Brooks got COVID here recently, uh, I don't know, maybe it's not recent, it's not recent anymore, Brooks, but uh, uh, we asked, Brooks, do you want, do you, do you want meals? Do you want us to invite, uh, invite people to bring meals? And, and, and he said, no, that, that he was okay. And, I, and we said, well, if you wanted meals, you probably wouldn't have to cook till April, uh, given who we are as a congregation and how we respond as a beloved community. Many people in our community have been sustained by the COVID-19 fund. They've been able to stay in their houses. They've been able to get Wi-Fi for their children to continue in, in school with e-learning. I received a call or a text. I, time runs together in COVID, you know. Uh, I don't know, two months ago, uh, that Tina, Tina had received notice from somebody in, in our church who had been diagnosed from COVID, probably got it at, at work, the factory where they worked, uh, and they were unable to work. And because they were unable to work, they were unable to pay bills, and they were at a point of crisis. And Tina forwarded this to me. I was on call, and I was able to respond in real time. Almost instantly, we were able to respond with support and care because of the generosity of this congregation. People know who we are and what we care about, a beloved community. It is a new year. We are looking at a new year. It's no longer 2020. It's 2021, which right now doesn't seem that different than 2020. I've got to admit, my, my hopes are already kind of diminished. But I want to invite us with, in the spirit of Anna and Simeon, to be alive to God as Anna and Simeon were alive to God, to tend to the spirits, to pay attention to the spirit, to let the spirit rest on us. And I want to invite us with Anna and Simeon to look for Jesus. Jesus, Jesus is here. Jesus is among us. Jesus has risen. Jesus is alive. And we can look for Jesus. And remember that Jesus, this Jesus, this, this, this one of whom Anna and Simeon give praises, told a story about being a neighbor, told a story about being a beloved community, and as you see Jesus, remember the calling on each one of us, and especially to us as a people, to give witness to who God is and to God's love. Amen. I invite you to, to join in song and, and it'll, this is going to be on the recording. Praise the one who breaks the darkness. 
It's now time for us to give from our financial resources. I urge you to give to us, to the general fund, and also to give to, continue to give to the COVID-19 fund. There are still many families in need in our community, and I've been receiving many, many calls during the past few weeks. You may do so by clicking on Give when you go to our website at collegemennonite.org, or you may do so by mailing in your check to 1900 South Main Street, Goshen, Indiana, 46526. Thank you. Please join me in prayer. 
Gracious God, we give you thanks that you have responded to the fervent prayers of Anna and Simeon. That you sent Jesus into our world to break the darkness. We thank you that we are bound together through Jesus with you and the Holy Spirit. We thank you that this binds us to each other. And we ask that this offering that we give to you would be used to witness to this truth. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. I invite you to sing now with our, in our closing hymn, number 428 in the hymnal, which is Go Now in Peace, which is... Lord, let us now. Lord, let us now depart in peace. Lord, let us now depart in peace. The one who was revealed to us. First spoken of as a star to the Magi, he was sought out and worshiped by foreigners. He is the good news given to us. I ask you that this new year, you Continue to be the good news to our community. Go in peace. Be blessed. Happy New Year. <laughs>